But Pedro, if you were CEO of DoorDash, oh, uh-oh. well, how would you do this? I mean, wh- how would you? Would you? You want me? To, you want me to put my DoorDash hat on? Yeah, you, yeah I want yeah, you to yeah. not be Pedro for okay. the. I'm gonna be. I'm gonna. Okay. Um, Who are you gonna be? Be, 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 an, be anti Pedro. <laughs> He's yep. gonna say I'm so. Gonna be. <laughs> so I'll say this. I think DoorDash is very smart. Um, I think they're calculated. I think they're thinking already about 2024, 2025. Big businesses all do. Good ones do. I think that um, they want the app to be a game. They want, they're playing on that. I think they, they know what they're doing. And they want us to talk about them, whether it's good or bad. I think that the second they would, I think when you force somebody to do something, a big company, you know, let's just say we, we get the tip transparency, which we should, it's, it's, it's stupid that we even need to ask for it, right? Because it does hurt the consumer, right? It does. Like Trader said, they treat the same customer, you know, a customer tips 10 bucks. It lives down the street like I do. I want my food hot. I appreciate the driver. The person, my, my neighbor tips zero. They're miserable. They suck, right? They don't, they don't understand or they're ignorant. And, but DoorDash gets the same 25, 30%. Right. So DoorDash is looking at the consumer very differently than us as drivers. So if I'm Tony, I don't I continue to do what I'm doing because I think that the the turnover rate with drivers is so high. OK, like I just stopped doing it for a little while. They don't care. It doesn't matter. Yeah. I got seven thousand deliveries. It does not matter. My girlfriend will do it. Her friend will do it. This person will do it. So many people are doing it. It's holiday season. They know more people are doing the apps right now. They need extra money for Christmas or the holidays. Like there's so many people that come to these apps every single day. They know that they know their numbers. So but I think, you know, I think, I think Pedro put it right. Is these companies are doing the calculus and obviously doing this is worth more to them than yeah. the political stuff that's going on. Right. Like these companies have a lot of smart people who are thinking here doing that trade off. Right. And to me really it was the fact that that was in writing really stood out as they told us why they're doing that. They don't, want you to really have that competition for the time i think pedro is right about the sort of lots of people are signing up yeah. even when people are leaving and that's why i've come more and more to the stance that the only way is you need to have a constant competition for 30 percent of people's time on the micro level and i think that's really how you start the pressure of the yeah. platforms is sort of that yeah. way well, I think DoorDash is what they're doing in, in, in certain markets testing thing, right? We all see these test pilots, you know, earn by time, earn by order. You know, I think they, they also have insurance against themselves because if things happen, they're already mentally preparing drivers to see, okay, well, now you're going to earn by time, right? <laughs> We're gonna, you're going you're gonna to earn by time. You're going to turn on your app. I'm going to need you a schedule. You're going to work four hours. You're gonna, we're going to pay you 15 bucks per hour. You need to take at least a couple orders. You need to be active. We're going to guarantee you this. You, you don't even have to worry about tips anymore. That's not going to be an issue. And they're going to take all that money that comes in on the app and just filter it from here, filter it to there. Mm-hmm. Play the guessing game. 625 orders sometimes are good. Sometimes they're not. We want you to gamble. We got this new offer screen right now in some markets where they don't show you the item count. They make the font size smaller. Yeah, they're hiding. You know, so everything that they're everything that they do is protect their protect their brand one way or the other. Right. And I think the different pilots that we see shows me that they're doing different things so that whatever result happens, they're prepared for it. That's what I think. And uh, I mean, David's David, D- yeah. David worked with Uber in operations in Las Vegas. And so he's familiar with this Uber under, uh, undergoes major amounts of spending in psychological uh, oh, I bet. testing yeah. with drivers. I, I don't even want to make it sound good because it's definitely like yeah. not good. It's the way they test it is how they can be on push your limits. Um, I don't know. I, I, I've read enough where it's not I, like, well, I wonder if that's real anymore. I've been reading it since 2015 when I started doing ride shares. So I know this stuff is real. Um, it's just to what level, really. But it's sad that they even go that far. Look, Steve, look, you'll literally be dropping off an of Uber, pulling up to the house, looking at your map, and it'll send you your boom, boom, boom. Yeah. Like, you'll, you'll have an accident. That's literally yeah. what you're talking about right there. Yep. Like, they know what they're doing. 